We're talking in this program with Robert Bateman, who is a renowned artist and naturalist, about his new book, Birds. What about have you been, we've talked about North America, have you been to Mexico to look at wildlife there? Yes. Um, I went on a recent trip, a fabulous trip. This, now this is a little bit within reach of you know, speaking in people's wallets instead of going yes. to the mall, going to um, Baja, mm. Baja, California. And uh, there's a wonderful outfit. It's uh, Lindblad Special Expeditions with a very small vessel and also the Zodiacs. And we took all of our, our um, almost all of our kids and our grandchildren. <laughs> and it was fabulous. You know, a five-year-old and four-year-old. And um, they just had, they were, they were touching whales. We had five species of whales. Wow. And watching the porpoises jump higher than the ship or higher than the bow of the ship. Mm -hmm and all the birds, and it was just a wonderful thing. So that aspect of Mexico is wonderful. Mexico City is another thing. It's you know, got air pollution. You have to mm -hmm. try to not breathe when you go to Mexico City, I guess. Right. It's one of the most but, densely populated cities on the planet, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But there are a lot of great places for birding. And what about Florida? Let's talk about that. Florida is... They've got endangered species uh, They've there, got right? an endangered species, the, the Florida cougar. The Everglades is endangered, and the reason the Everglades is endangered is the biggest single negative factor is sugar, big sugar industry, which is why I think oh. our young people are endangered <laughs> in North America. Oh, yeah. Because of uh, all the pop that they drink in schools and places like this. Mm -hmm. and there's a huge lobby for it, and... Uh, they're sucking water out of the ground, lowering the water table in the Everglades. And um, there was a proposition in one of, the, I think it was one of the Clinton elections, to put one cent on the um, tax on sugar, one cent per pound. And the people voted it down because the sugar industry had a big attack ads attacking the freedom of Americans, you know, and putting one cent on. And what they didn't say is Americans pay 11 cents more than world price of sugar because of the sugar lobby and because of, you know, keeping out world sugar from mm -hmm. the West Indies and places like that. Mm -hmm. So they're paying 11 cents more, but they want to add another cent just to protect the Everglades, all because of the lobby. Mm -hmm. wow. So that's, <laughs> that's one of the big threats in Florida is, of course, water and water table. Yeah. But it still is a beautiful place. Yes, and, and you uh, have some nice paintings but what, what we, from there. One of the things that, that I say when I give, give lectures, um, we can have a beautiful planet for the future. We just have to do two things. We have to pay attention. And looking at the birds is the best way of paying attention because they're like the canary in the coal mine. Mm -hmm. And number two, we have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And um, just pay a little bit more for our products and for our our, you know, our energy and our fuel and all that kind of thing. Right. And uh, we could have a, a better planet, but it, it seems uh, propaganda is in the other direction. We aren't willing to pay for it. Mm -hmm. People looking for shortcuts. Yeah, and that's why I say it's here and here. It's in the spirit and in the philosophy. Mm -hmm. In Europe, they're a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a lot better attitude, a lot more respect mm -hmm. toward each other and, uh, and toward nature. Mm -hmm. And they're willing to pay a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about something shocking in your book. Robins who get drunk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I that's think right. people would find that surprising. That's right. Well, <laughs> fruit, <laughs> fruit ferments. <laughs> I guess if anybody's ever tasted wine, I guess that's fermented fruit. Uh -huh. And that produces alcohol. And so uh, I, guess, I guess alcohol on any um, vertebrate brain, it has an effect on your brain, and, uh, and I guess it has an appeal to, uh, and so I don't know if, if Robins can be alcoholics and alcohol dependent, <laughs> for sure, but I know that it tastes pretty good, and they just keep on eating it, and then they keel over. And they're, and they're drunk they just and sleep stupid. it off. And that's right. Exactly. Take away their car keys. Exactly. Yeah. And with the Robins, um, in, in the book, as I mentioned earlier, there's really nice stories that accompany each one. And you said it was kind of interesting how the robins were named, that they're not so mm -hmm. directly associated with the robins from Europe? Is that The it? robins, yes, the robin, the European robin, there's a picture of it in the book too. It's a, mm -hmm. um, it's a bird about half the size, halfway between a robin and a chickadee okay. in size. And uh, it's 
red breast and white down here and a brownish gray back. Mm -hmm. And that's the Robin, when you hear about who killed Cock Robin and, mm -hmm. and all those poetry and all that kind of thing from, from uh, England and Europe. And so when the Europeans came over here, they saw this thing with a red breast and they, they said that's, uh, they call it a Robin. Mm -hmm. However, the, our Robin is really closely related to their blackbird. Paul wow. McCartney's Blackbird Singing in the Dead of Night mm -hmm. is, um, is, a ro is basically a robin mm -hmm. that's all black. Mm -hmm. And it, they hop like a robin and they eat uh, peck for worms. They have a yellow bill and a ring around the eye. And they, they sing, um, well, they sing almost maybe prettier than in the background of McCartney's song. You can hear the, robin, the Blackbird's song. Mm -hmm. So there's that little mix up and confusion by the, our early settlers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like, too, how you um, will include some of the mythology associated with different birds. Um, the raven, for instance. The raven is the, the our, our uh, native peoples, in politically correct in Canada, we call them First Nations peoples, um, saw the raven as the trickster. And uh, he's the wisest and smartest of all, almost all the creatures. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's always kind of trying to trick mankind. and. And, uh, and fool around in, in mythology, that's true. Mm -hmm. Well, and definitely made um, very famous by the Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, Nevermore. I don't know where yeah. Nevermore comes from. <laughs> well, he paints him as just so dark and foreboding. Right. And, you know, I think yeah. that's what people might think of. I, lo I, love, I love ravens, and they're wonderful. They have these wonderful, a huge range of vocabulary of talking to each other. Huh. They do these beautiful tumbling courtship flights. And, um, yeah, I like them because, you know, I don't like everything that's pretty and garish. I've, I got mm -hmm. maybe the most garish bird in the world, the uh, Lady Amherst pheasant male, even though it's Lady Amherst, it's a male, um, <laughs> which is too much. I have a, a painting of it. It lives in panda country in China. Mm -hmm. But the raven, just with its black mantle, I find very much more subtle. I actually like it better. You spent some time in the Far East. Yes, yep. Uh, and how do they have, handle birds well, and we nature? Have, uh, my wife Birgit and I especially love India. Mm -hmm. it, again, heart and head. In India, wildlife is abundant mm -hmm. in all the towns and villages and even the cities, even a big city like New Delhi, right on the median strips with pollution and traffic rushing by. You have uh, red wattle lapwings and uh, rose ring parakeets flying overhead and um, kingfishers, just all kinds of... Mm -hmm interesting birds right in the city and it, I think it has to do with their uh, Hinduism and reverence for life and not believing in killing things. Mm -hmm. China on the other hand with all due respect to it being a very interesting uh, country and quite beautiful in many ways they eat everything so you can drive for miles and miles and miles without seeing a bird mm -hmm. and uh, there's even worse pollution in in China. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the Panda Reserve Nobody, we were there in December, nobody had seen a panda since uh, May, the previous May, in the, in the panda reserve. Wow. And they don't, they don't pay their, uh, their uh, patrol enforcers. Mm -hmm. They just, uh, you know, they go ahead and poach <laughs> everything. Apparently so. So it, it has a totally different aspect toward nature. Uh, it's still worth visiting, especially because of the history, and there is some, some nature there, but mm -hmm. quite a contrast between China and India. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder, you know, as we're talking, I'm just wondering if there's a, an organization that issues a report card oh, a lot on of environmental oh, yeah. issues a lot of, of different countries. You know? Right. And, yeah, in spite of all the things I've been saying, and in spite of the, some of the dreadful political trends for, from a nature point of view, um, it's, there are thousands of organizations and hundreds of thousands of wonderful people out there um, my wife and I, well, one of the ones is World Watch is, mm -hmm. is one of the, uh, the best ones for paying attention. And uh, I really enjoy going through their newsletter every month. Mm -hmm. The Sierra Club is, is really great. The Audubon Society, World Wildlife Fund, there's a whole list of them mm -hmm. that are really great. At, um, that I, I recommend if people are concerned about some of the issues I'm talking about, they join, you know, four or five or ten organizations, it mm -hmm. probably doesn't cost more than a case of beer right. <laughs> to join these and yeah. get the newsletter and get active. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's talk too about where people can find your paintings, prints of your work. 
as they flip through the book or see different pictures that we're showing during our program? Okay, well the... Well, in the U.S. The, it's a, in a the gallery US, in my, Florida? Uh, there is a publisher in Florida which is called Mill Pond Press, mm -hmm. and they're referred to in the back of the book. Mm -hmm. And um, that it's distributed also in Canada, which this program doesn't go to, of course. <laughs> um, and um, they can find my... That would be the best way to find your local dealer. Mm -hmm. There are um, two um, that I can mention in this area. One is Art Barbarians and Grasslands Gallery, which is in the Mall of America. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and, uh, but there are, there are many others where they can go and see my prints if they want to uh, look at them. I'm not a salesperson. They don't have to buy them, <laughs> but they can look at them and see the kind of work I do. Sure. And also through that same source, Milpon Press, they can find out how to buy other books if they're interested in other ones too. Mm -hmm. Good. And then your website? Website is uh, www.batemanideas.com. Mm -hmm. But it's not about my art. It's about my ideas. And I've got another little book that I'm quite proud of called Thinking Like a Mountain. It's just this big and it's uh, not very expensive. And it can be reached the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's about some of the... It's sort of nice little stories, but they, they kind of put an environmental punch in them. Mm -hmm. Thinking like a mountain, like, like a mountain. to honestly assume a viewpoint as if you were a mountain. Yeah, and thinking like a mountain with the perspective of a mountain that, that we are looking at the past and the good things in the past. Mm -hmm. We've got a good view from the mountain. We're looking ahead to the future and we're mm -hmm. looking out to the sides for other parts of the world that have good ideas. Mm -hmm. For example, I think Holland and the Scandinavian countries are probably the best run countries in the world mm -hmm. for nature and I also think for human beings. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where thinking like a mountain comes from. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for spending time with us. My pleasure. It has been really interesting. I and it's a it. wonderful book. Thanks for your work that you're doing. Thank you. Okay, good. And this is Lori Creever signing off on another edition of 30 Minutes with the Author, inviting you to read a book. It could change your life. And let's encourage our children to do the same. <laughs>